All right, let's talk about trees. Um, I love working with trees, and Blender, fortunately, has some amazing capabilities to work with trees, be they realistic or stylized. You can do some really cool things with that. And there's two main options for making trees in Blender. One of them is the sapling tree generation add-on, and one of them is a third-party tool, a free extension or application called Arbaro. Hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Regardless, it's a standalone JavaScript application that lets you create trees in a similar way to the sapling generation add-on for Blender, but with a lot of key differences. And as I'm working with trees, as you can see, I've got a tree right here that I'm working on right now. I have done a lot of work with both of these, and so I'm going to kind of go through the pros and cons of both, um, talk about one, talk about the other, and then share why I think one is better than the other, and how you can best utilize these tools as you're working with trees in Blender. And just kind of a spoiler alert, my personal preference is not a sapling generator, but let me talk about why. So, let's talk about Arbaro first. And let me actually pull it up so you can see it. So this is Arbaro, and you can download it on GitHub um, at this link here. If you type Arbaro into Google, you can find it on SourceForge. You can also find it here on GitHub. I prefer to download it from GitHub, but whatever works for you, you can find it there. And yeah, it's open source, so it's editable if you need to make any changes and you have the skills necessary to do that yourself. So taking a look at this program, the first and biggest pro is that any change you make is reflected in real time. Um, so this is a preset I've made called Hawthorne. It's actually um, this tree here, and I'll probably put a link to it in the description in case anyone wants it. But I'm just going to go ahead and save this preset and then open a different preset so I can mess around with it without um, worrying about affecting this preset that I've made. So let's go ahead and open up the uh, European Larch. Very cool. So one of the, again, one of the biggest pros of Arbaro is that you can make real-time changes. And so, for example, if I go here to the trunk radius, I can change this ratio here, which affects the trunk radius as compared to the trunk length. And I can put this up to something ridiculous, and immediately I have results. Um, just so you better see what just happened. Essentially, this is making the trunk insanely thick. Um, and yeah, you can see you have all of that control and it changes instantaneously. Another nice thing is that every parameter has a description. So you've got these graphical descriptions over here that kind of show you how things work. You can also click on any parameter and click on that there and it'll show you exactly what everything means, which is very helpful because that's something sapling gen definitely does not do. And that's the case for all of the parameters. Any of these parameters you can go in going to give you the information you're looking for. Another big thing, and this is probably the thing that puts me over the edge um, between Sapling Generator and Arbaro, is you can make changes without committing those changes. And to see what I mean by that, let me pull up Sapling Tree Gen. And for those of you that are familiar with Sapling Gen, you're probably going to know exactly what I'm about to do. But as you're working with the add tree options, if at any point you click away from that onto a different object, for example, you no longer can make any changes to the tree. It's a huge pain and I hope someday they fix that, but it's just, it's so difficult to work with because not only does it change if you click away, but even just moving the navigation if you happen to be moving the navigation and your finger slips on your mouse and you deselect like that, which does happen sometimes, again, your tree is now unable to be changed in any way, shape, or form. With Arbaro, I feel like I'm saying it differently every time I say it, but I honestly have no idea how it's supposed to be pronounced. With Arbaro, you can save presets once you're happy with them. And even better, 
Once you save a preset, you can export that preset as an OBJ file, and you can export it over and over and over and over again, making little tweaks, making little tweaks, making little tweaks, until you've got it exactly the way you want it. Now there is a downside to this. Um, first of all, it's an OBJ file, so it's not just a curve like Sapling Tree Generator does, and this I mean, with Sapling Tree Generator, you have more control over that curve. Um, the taper objects and all that kind of stuff, and also you have more resolution. Because this is being exported purely as a mesh, you don't ha have that really nice curve resolution that you can get from the Sapling Tree Gen. And so if you're looking for a really, really high resolution tree, that's something to bear in mind, is that this will give you high resolution, but it will never be quite as good as that of a curve, because it is mesh based. Another thing about this is it's not super easy to change the random seed. Like, if you leave this value the same, every time you export this, it will be exactly the same tree. Whereas with sapling, every time you make a tree, it automatically chooses a different random seed. And you can very easily change that um, here as well which makes it easier to make a lot of different trees all at once. I feel like Arboro is perhaps better for making a really precise one tree, one singular tree. Sapling Generator might be better for making a collection or a group of trees that are different from each other but similar enough to be the same species. I don't know. It's probably worth experimenting with those and seeing how that works out. But um, back to what I was saying. so. Some other cons with Arbaro are that it's very easy to save over a preset. Um, for example, if I was to make some changes to this here and say, I don't know. Yeah, let's go here, let's go here. Let's change this curve to like 90 and this curve back to like 40. Then go up here. We've got this really funky looking tree that's like curved all the way down. And I'm, it's painful to do this, but I'm gonna click save. <laughs> and then I'm going to open a different tree, uh, Black Oak. And then I'm gonna open my European Larch. <laughs> that's what I was working on. And you can see it's now overridden that preset. Uh, so this is kind of annoying. You can, um, pretty easily re-download the presets from GitHub. Just go to this trees folder here and download those. But it's still annoying. I, I can't deny it's really easy to override a preset and it is kind of annoying when you do that. Also, I mentioned that it's a nice thing that every parameter has a description. One thing that's not so helpful is that most of these parameters are not a singular how do I say this? They're not a singular change. So like for example, this over here, you can see that the base equals scale times base size. You can't just set base. You have to set the scale and the base size. Um, most of the math that goes into this is based on multiple variables. And so for here example, if you want to change the height of the tree, there's no height of the tree parameter you can change the scale and you can change the base size and the ratio power and like you can change the length of level one and length of like you can change all those parameters in order to determine the height of the tree but there isn't just a option to say how tall do i want this tree um, there's also not an option and at least not an easy option to determine a point below which branches don't grow so for example, I mean, if you pull in a preset, you can modify it, but if you're just trying to figure out a way to have a trunk without branches, a section of that trunk, it's not very intuitive and it's pretty difficult to do without a preset. Kind of weird. Um, let's talk about sapling gen a little bit more. So with sapling gen, go ahead and add a tree here. It's like, a, it's a curve, so you can taper better. It's internal, you don't have to worry about importing OBJ files, anything like that. It's higher resolution. That's all really cool. But as I mentioned, you don't have a say in 
when you're committing your changes because as soon as you click away your changes are except apparently this once yeah as soon as you select a different object I should say your changes are committed also um, if you switch into edit mode couldn't find the curves there if you switch into edit mode or even just select that object again your editing options are gone another con of this is that it doesn't tell you what anything means. So again, in Arbero, it has that description for every parameter. Sapling tree gen really doesn't. And it has some more powerful features, like this custom shape here is more powerful than what you can do in Arbero, for example. But it's not super clear what most of these numbers mean. And without that live, editing feature that Arbero has where you can see the changes you make on all these numbers and not just see the changes but I'm actually going to show you something you can see the changes zoomed in so for example this is the whole tree this is a, the general tree this deformed monstrosity I've created but when you take the level zero you can work with just the trunk and then you go to level one and you can see just those branches go to leaves you can see exactly how the leaves are interacting because it zooms into those same thing with level two it'll show you the length and all of that because it's zooming in and showing you only what you need to see for that level uh, sapling tree generator does not do this and i wish they did but as a result even though sapling has more options and more powerful options they're not explained as well and you can't see your changes or make changes as easily. So for that reason, I personally prefer Arbaro. I'm just going to get rid of that now. But yeah, that's just a quick rundown of the two major tree creators that you can have for Blender 2.8. I'm pretty sure Arbaro works all the way back for I think it's like 2.4, 2.5. I don't know exactly. In Sapling Tree Gen, you can get in most versions of Blender as well. Um, and that's about it. Yeah, I'll put a link to this preset in the description in case anyone needs it. Um, I based it off of a, a real life Hawthorne tree, and if anyone wants one of those, you're welcome to have it. And yeah, that's about it.